What's up, everyone? We are live at 5 at Broadway.com. It is Thursday, November 29th. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Beth Stevens. And over there, we have Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And an awesome guest today. We This have, guy's everywhere. All my have, favorite movies and plays and everything. And he's making his Broadway debut Broadway in debut. the Waverly Gallery. We're talking about Lucas Hedges. Yes. He's here. Yes, there's so much to talk about. Uh, but first, today's top five. You will be found at the movies. Okay, I didn't see this coming. Oh, that was cute. That was I good. saw that was this good. coming. You Thank saw you. it coming. Yeah. I didn't see it coming. Dear Evan Hansen is going to be a feature film, yes. like a real deal yeah. movie. Pretty cool, right? Uh, well, what's, what I, the reason why I saw it coming is because so many fans have been making their own movie versions on like YouTube. And like that, that this, can create a there's whole There's this thing. great uh, Waving Through a Window made by something called Working with Lemons. has like half a million views. But Ooh. they like did Waving Through a Window as like a film. And I was like, the minute I saw that, I was like, this should be a movie. It should be a movie. And now it will be. So uh, Pask and Paul have sold the musical rights to Universal Pictures. And to Mark Platt specifically, Mark Platt, who's the who father a of Ben connection. Platt. Mm -hmm. Maybe for uh, and Adam Siegel is also a producer with, yeah. with Mark Platt. Uh, Tony winning, winning book writer Stephen Levinson, who... Uh, we recently talked to is going to write the script and also executive produce along with Pasek and Paul. Wow, cool. Pretty cool. So that's all we know. Uh, Steven Chabosky, who we just talked about yesterday, mm -hmm. um, is and did Beauty and the Beast and, and Rent, is in conversations, just talking, just talking about directing it. Interesting. Just discussing things. Anyway, cool. uh, no, no release date or casting, but pretty exciting. Calm down. It'll probably take a couple of years. Float like a butterfly, sing like a bee. Wow. Okay, this wow. one I didn't see coming. I didn't know if she was going to say that, but okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so there's this great Muhammad Ali documentary called so When good. We Were Kings, which is all about the rumble in the jungle, which is the George Foreman, the famous Muhammad Ali championship fight. And it won an Oscar. Right. Yes. And so they're making it, it came out in 1996, the movie, and they're making a musical out of it, which is cool. Wild. Yeah, I think it's really Wild. cool. I love it's that. It's a great story. Uh, Shelley Marcus has adapted the book for the musical. The score will feature R&B classics, as well as the Fuji's song, Rumble in the Jungle, which is, of course, about Not the Rumble in the Jungle. Classics. It was written for the movie. Right, right, right. Uh, there will be a workshop in the spring, and we'll see what happens. But this is definitely something to look out for. And the stage and screen star is hitting the road. We're talking about Hugh Jackman. I feel like we should just talk about him every day, because he's very close to my heart. Um, Wolverine's <laughs> going on the road. He's taking his solo show around the world. So... Obviously, he won a Tony for The Boy From Oz. He won an Emmy for hosting the Tony Awards. Yeah, well, he used he hosted it like four times. Four times he's hosted it. Very good, Paul. Uh, it kicks off in May in Hamburg, Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, the North American tour uh, kicks off June 18th in Houston. We'll play Madison Square Garden here in New York City oh. and the Hollywood Bowl in L.A., among huh. other places, and special guest star. Kyle Saddle. Of The Greatest Showman. Naturally, Greatest we'll Showman co-star. We'll join him as a special guest. Pretty exciting. Yeah, is he going to sing from The Greatest Showman? He better. He's going to sing from The Greatest Showman, from The Boy From Oz, from Les Mis, from Oklahoma, all, from whatever Wolverine the would river. sing. The River. <laughs> that wasn't a musical. That was not a musical, but it was on Broadway. <laughs> He'll do scenes from The River. <laughs> he won't. Got that fish? No. No, probably not. And one of our faves was named Entertainer of the Year. Yep, Mr. Darren Criss. Entertainer of the Year, what does that mean? Everything? One of the entertainers of the year. Calm down. Calm and Entertainment Weekly does a list every year. He, of course, won an Emmy Award for yes. the assassination of Gianni Versace, American Crime Story. It might be the other way around. American Crime Story. There's a, there's a colon. I don't know. Um, <laughs> he was fantastic in that. He's been on Broadway. He's been He's in the been seat. at this table. Yes. Um, and congratulations, Darren. So check that out. There's some nice photos. I know you guys like nice photos of Darren Chris, so go check them out. Come back to Broadway. And this Australian pop star is officially on a journey to the past. Welcome to Broadway, Cody Simpson. He's in an Anastasia starting this evening. Mm -hmm. He will be with the production through February 17th, and he joins last year's Star of the Year, Broadway.com Star of the Year, not Entertainment Weekly's, uh, Chrissy Altamar, Max von Essen, John Bolton, Vicki Lewis, and Judy Kay. Cool. Ha happy first <laughs> show. It's his Broadway debut. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Broadway debuts, 
Good segue. I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for being here, Beth. Well, thank you, Paul. But Mr. Lucas Hedges is here, so uh, it's time to make way for him. Mm -hmm. Hey, Caitlin, tell everyone about Lucas. Gladly. Uh, so, guys, we have Oscar nominee Lucas Hedges here with us tonight because he is currently making his Broadway debut in the Waverly Gallery. He appeared off-Broadway in Yen, and he earned his an Oscar nomination for his work in Manchester by the Sea. His other screen credits include Lady Bird, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Boy Erased and Ben is Back. And I also want to say Boy Erased and Ben and Back Ben is Back, like two movies in the same two months. Big deal. Uh, follow the show at Waverly Gallery on social media to stay up to date on everything you need to know. And please leave all of your questions in the comments down below. Please welcome Lucas and Paul. Mr. Lucas Hedges. Hello. I don't want to make you sound like an even bigger deal, but aren't you also in mid nineties? I am in mid nineties. I mean, there's a lot, a lot, of, a lot, lot of stuff which happening. Which is also with... produced by Scott Rudin, who, who uh -huh. did Waverly Gallery. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Full there's circle. a lot happening with you. Do you feel like you're almost oversaturated? There's just too much Lucas Hedges Way in the world. Way too much. I shouldn't be here right now. <laughs> I'm going to run out of your screen room, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it because you're fantastic and everything. Thank you. Thank uh, but it must be feeling like a moment. It does feel like a moment. I, I, I'm doing my best to handle it and to relax within it. Um, uh, I don't really know what's happening right now. <laughs> I'm sort of... And it's kind of bizarre because doing a play is right. kind of like... You exist in like this like very small container yeah. where your life is just this, and then on top of that, there are these other things that sort of seem to be happening in the world, but yeah. I don't seem to have any proof that any of it's real. Right. It's just people seem to tell me that it's happening, yeah. and then I'm like, oh, I did those movies. That's that's true. I did. I don't remember doing. I don't know. It's <laughs> everything's a blur. I guess. There's like a thousand people watching you every night at the Waverly Gallery, and then there's millions yeah. of people watching you yeah. around the world. It's so that's it's, weird. It's really, really weird. Um, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it right Nothing now. What say. other questions? It do is you have? What I don't know. <laughs> no, I, w I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you're on Broadway. Let's talk yeah. about this because yeah. <laughs> I've said this before on here, but uh, the Waverly Gallery is like my favorite play right now on Broadway. Oh wow! So moving. Oh, I, it, it hit me in a way I did not expect. Um, beautiful, and especially you. You made me cry. So oh, thanks thank for that. You, thank you. Very you much. must see that. I had Joan Allen here, and you oh, must yeah? see how it's affecting people. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's shocking. It's a it's a play. For those of you who don't know, yeah. it's a um, my character is telling the story of how my grandmother yeah. slow uh, how she dies and and her she has Alzheimer's right. um, and it's shocking how many people are living with this yeah. right now or, or just coming off of it. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a it's not th there isn't much art being made about this and about how how we die in in mm -hmm. America or or really in the world and mm -hmm. what it means to die and 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 what it means to live with Alzheimer's at at in your 90s um so it feels like a really important play also yep. i mean most most of broadway audiences are filled with older people yeah. and it's interesting to do a play that feels like, I don't know, the last play I did, I felt like everybody who was past a certain age came to and was like, what did I just see? <laughs> but it feels like this This really is like, it, it has a unifying effect on everyone in the audience because, I don't know. I don't know. It just, it feels actually really important and relevant. So, mm -hmm. And the great Elaine May made her uh, return to yes. Brazil, which is she's an yes. icon. Yeah. Um, and when, when I saw it, some of the, humor in it about getting older. It was really, I saw it with a matinee crowd, actually. And I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I Wednesday, went to a Wednesday matinee. One, yeah. Well, oddly, one of the most uh, exciting crowds. Yeah. Weird. The reactions. The it was so fun to hear yeah, him react like, to. People are excited Wednesday mornings for the Waverly Gallery. <laughs> I don't know why. The last one I did, it was like, <laughs> no, everyone was asleep. This is like, it's like, it's like a rock concert. It's crazy. <laughs> a rock concert of a certain age. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but is, was Broadway something important to you? Yeah. I mean, I knew you well, did start up studying uh, theater. You well, did theater. So my dad, my parents actually were introduced by Joe. Joe Mantello is like, was like the matchmaker. And my dad oh, went wow. to college with Joe and they started a theater company and together. And was your dad involved with Naked Angels? He was yeah. a little bit. Yeah, Which, but he's... Kenneth Lonergan, mm -hmm. the playwright. Yeah, they knew each other a little. Yeah. But he came in, I think, for readings occasionally. Okay. But... My dad went to college with Joe, and my mom was in Circle Rep. Oh, yeah. And Joe met both of them and introduced them, and they ended up getting together. Wow. <laughs> but uh, 
what am I talking about? Why I got into Broadway. My dad, we, we were forced, me and my brother, to come to shows when we were very young, and I really resented them for that until I saw um, The Normal Heart at mm. the Golden Theater, mm -hmm. actually, which is where we're right. doing Waverly Gallery. And it was like something shifted. Uh, or I, I, I feel like I understood the potential for what... I became, I became romantic about the idea of Broadway mm. when mm. I saw that play. Mm -hmm. And, um, Oddly, starring the guy that matched. Yeah, parents, exactly. Joe and we got, to, we got to go backstage and and talk to the people and Joe and yeah, uh, uh, yeah. And fr and then I, I did a theater program summer my junior year of high school. Mm -hmm. And from really from that point on, I was like, this is the this is the medium that feels like I, th there's a higher ceiling for magic mm. in broad in mm -hmm. theater than there is in film. I think. Yeah. Did you, uh, did I miss some great Lucas Hedges stage performances from back then? Uh, some... <laughs> oh, well, like middle school? Yeah, like, like what were you doing? Well, I played, when I was in fourth grade, I played The Gate in um, <laughs> Vasilisa the Fair. Important. Um, That's important. But I, I then, I, I had this big, I had my sort of semi-star turn in Nicholas Nickleby. Oh. Like in seventh grade, I played Smike. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and from there, I actually got my first audition for a movie, uh, which was Moonrise Kingdom. Okay, right, yeah. Okay, so that's, I sort that's of, I actually, discovered. yeah, I was discovered in my high, middle school theater. Right. Um, we should actually, your dad, uh, Peter Hedges. I was obsessed with him. I was obsessed oh, with really? the movie What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Yeah, right. Which was like his first. Yeah. Movie yeah, he, he wrote, wrote the book. He wrote the book and, and then the screenplay. Yeah. And a, and a playwright also. Your, yeah. Your dad. So you you've been around theater people and famous people your whole yeah. life. Right, I mean, yeah. so you must, and you must meet people like when you just said your mom worked at Circle Rep. I thought, well, did Joan Allen know your mom? And you, yeah, you so must be like in these links with. I like, have a photo on my phone of Joan holding actually my older brother when he was born. Oh wow, which is really odd because I didn't even know that was. Now she's my mom. Um, <laughs> on but, stage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Joan, Joan, and my my dad actually was. Uh, a stalker, a stalker of Joan. Oh, my dad kind good of. To know. That's an intense <laughs> word, but my dad like showed up outside her, her stage door at Steppenwolf a few times when he was like eighteen. Oh wow! And like asked her out. I think <laughs> like he says that he just wanted to be friends, but I don't know what he was <laughs> actually intended. Um, and they got together and became good friends. Wow. And, and uh, but my dad was like just a super fan of yeah. Joan Allen's from, yeah. a, from a young age. Yeah. Um, I saw Boy Erased over the weekend. Beautiful movie. Mm. Um, I didn't, ex again, I didn't expect to be so moved by that either. I thought it was kind of, I thought I was going into it thinking, like, well, I know this story. I know where it's, where it's going. Mm. Um, and it's a really powerful, powerful film. Mm. Thank you. I, one question, though, because your dad is a filmmaker, is that footage of you in the beginning of yeah, the movie? Yeah. Okay, the movie opens with, yeah, with, um, childhood with, a, with an adorable child. Yeah, with and, and it's my dad filming it, but they've now added voiceovers of Russell and Nicole Russell talking. And Kidman, Crow and, people, and Kidman, people like the Aussies don't know that it, a lot of people don't know that it's me. One giveaway I think is that I'm actually wearing a New York Knicks jersey in one of the, <laughs> which of course my character who grows up in Arkansas wouldn't be wearing. Right, um, right. It, I, I thought it was really cool. It was almost like seeing Boyhood, where I was like, where I immediately went, yeah. and then you see you as an adult, and I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. That's really yeah. him. It added a whole layer to the movie. Yeah, I wish we had added, a, we had gotten, we couldn't find the music music videos, the home videos <laughs> from more of a, a little bit older of an age. It's only me from like two to four. It worked. So. It was very powerful. Okay, good. Good. This is, of course, a movie about uh, gay conversion therapy, which is shockingly... Yeah around much yeah. more than legal than in 36 legal. states in America which is um, yeah so it's yeah. like this really fascinating um, topic that people haven't really like dug into yeah really um, which is one of the things that I was very interested about in pursuing the project was that it felt like I'd, I'd been a part of projects that were artist meant something artistically to mm. me but this was like it felt like there was a I don't know, like it was a chance to be a part of a, of a movement yes. or, or, or some sort of um, his, historic, there was a historical and cultural significance to it that I hadn't been able to experience with my art before. Yeah. So. I was thinking that you, you uh, your character's name is Jared and he's based yeah. on Gerard. 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 It, it's, 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 it's spelled Gerard, but it's okay. 
pronounced Garrett. Because it's, it's his, I saw him on the Today Show. It's his memoirs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he wrote the memoirs yeah. and the movies is, is his story. Yeah. Um, and also, your your character in the Waverly Gallery is sort of... Kenny. Kind of, literally Kenny. It's literally Kenneth Lauder again. Li- it's like, literally I mean, his He's story. writing about his grandma. I mean, yeah. He wrote... He just changed the names. It's Dan, I play Dan, Danny, Ken, Kenny. Um, right. But, yeah, I, I'm, for some reason, keep playing... These real, real stories. Real people. I'm trying... Um, uh, yeah. You also have very <laughs> glamorous on screen and on stage. We talked about Joan Allen. But um, so Nicole Kidman I know. is your mom, and but you knew that. I knew that, yeah. <laughs> you actually filmed it with her. Uh, and then also, uh, isn't Julia Roberts also your yeah. mom? Yeah, and then. And that movie yeah. is called. Uh, ben is back. Right, yeah. that, that's coming out. Look for. I mean, that's about to come out. Yeah, it's it's the next big Lucas Hedges project. <laughs> keep it, yeah, keep man, it. it's crazy. What's it like working with these people? Are you are you kind of? Um, is it? I'm over it. You're over it. <laughs> okay, no, I no. mean, you, but you have sort of grown up with um, being around entertainment yeah. because of your family and. Yeah, I am. Um, I wonder if that I, helps I, you I drop think, in a little bit. I think the thing that. Um, when, when I did Manchester by the Sea and when that yeah. came out, there was a level of like the amount of press I had to do and the amount of rooms I had to be in in which mm. there were just, it was just filled with people whose faces I had grown up with. Mm. <laughs> it was like a year where I like, I, mean, I feel like season. I had to get, I had to get, a, like that's where I got over. I mean, I wouldn't say I got over it because right. I, you know, if I'm a fan, if I'm a big fan, I'm going to freak out. Right. But to the point of celebrity, like, yeah. and the, normalizing that, I feel like I got over that to some extent. And, uh, but it, it is weird because I feel like I have relationships with these people yeah. mm-hmm. throughout my ch- entire childhood. Like, both Nicole and Julia are people I grew up with. Wow. And so it's, it's just weird getting to know people that you feel like you've known your whole life. I don't know. It, 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 but I don't experience it as much as celebrity, as much as just mm-hmm. like they were around. It must be weird for them, too, that, that that random kid is now like an Oscar-nominated co-star. Yeah. I mean, for yeah, them, too, they must be like, that kid? Well, oh, that, yeah. that, that's the weirdest thing about it for me, actually, is not getting to work with them, but is getting, is getting to know them, but, but that they already know who I am. Like, that, that <laughs> right. they... That I meet, some, like I met both of them, and they knew my name, right. and that they had seen me in something. Right. It's like that's like, you the know most me? baffling part about it. I think it's that's like, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and what was you were Oscar nominated for Manchester by the Sea? I, I am you, Oscar. I'm kidding. Sorry, yeah, forever, forever, <laughs> forever. actually, Oscar nominated. No, um, what was the? Ridiculous. Was there one person that was really cool to meet during that time? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Does that person have a name? Um, well, there were so many, but who was it? Oh, there's got to be one worth mentioning. Um, were there any cool interactions? Or oh God, um, oh come on! It's all right, you don't have to. No, but I don't. I, 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 I tr- it, it. Hmm. Hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep thinking. Who do you about want it? to play your mother next? Is there, is there like a dream list? Is there a dream list of? Future mothers. Future um, I'd love to. Uh, the first person that popped into my mind was Amy Adams. That oh. would be great. Sure. I think mm-hmm. I resemble her too to some to oh, enough to play okay. her son. Uh-huh. Um, uh, who do you want to play my mom? Who do I want? Who to do you play want mom? to play my mom? Who do I want to play your mom? Uh, Patty Lapone. Oh shit! <laughs> In a new Broadway musical. <laughs> <laughs> do you sing? Not really. No. Okay. But you, I was just sent, David Cromer just sent me the clip of her doing Sweeney Todd yeah. in 2000. Do you know of this? Yeah, I, you saw, I saw it. Really? I'm older than Oh, you. she did it. She literally did the production. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, oh, it wasn't just like she's her She's done multiple productions from, of Sweeney Todd. Really? Yeah. She did it on Broadway with Michael Cerberus, where she had a crazy black wig. And wow. then she did a more traditional version of George Hearn. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She knows her Sweeney Todd. And is, M- is musical theater your, spe- your specialty? My or specialty? Just- I, like, I, I guess I know it. Yeah? I know it. Okay. Yeah, I know it. I, I prefer, I like the musicals. <laughs> okay. But cool. every once in a while, a play comes along, yeah. like the Waverly Gallery. <laughs> oh, uh, that, that, that's actually something I wanted to bring up. Elaine, one day during tech, started improvising songs from, the, as like she was creating songs for the Waverly Gallery, the like musical. the musical version. <gasps> and there's this one scene where, I really don't want to give anything away, but she thinks something has happened with her dog. Yes. She thinks somebody stole her dog, mm-hmm. and she came running out out of her door, singing, "Somebody stole my dog." <laughs> <laughs> she 
She was like, somebody stole my dog. Somebody stole my dog. And I was like, nobody stole your dog. <laughs> and it was like, t- to this day, we still sing it. Like, That's amazing. Which I think you would enjoy. I like, love it. <laughs> um, Do you think uh, Kenny Lonergan is open to a I musical can't version say that of the he Waverly is. Color? Um, <laughs> but he does love musicals. I remember one time he was singing, I caught him singing Hamilton, which it was kind of oh. odd. But because he's such a, I don't know, he's like so exist in such a bubble in which mm-hmm. he doesn't know anything that's happening in the world today. Like he's <laughs> like, he doesn't think any good content has been made since like 1930 or so. I don't know. It's like, <laughs> he's very pessimistic about the state of the arts today. That's but fun to be around. He loves Hamilton, I guess. And, and the band's visit too. Um, well, cause Cromer. Yeah. It's, it's oh, but he lo- he really did love it. Yeah. Um, he was raving about it. Yeah. It's it's weird that David Cromer, I mean, everyone knows him as a director now. I know. I, I, now actor. I can't imagine him being a director. I only know. I hope he still remembers how to do it. I uh, Me too. Because he's good at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you like the band? Isn't it great? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's really great. Um, hey, Caitlin, <coughs> what are the hey. people online saying? We got a lot of Hedges? questions. Oh, I love it. Is this coming in live? Oh, yeah. Coming in live. Do it live. Um, so Annalise from Instagram asks, when did you know you wanted to do theater? Mm. Um, <laughs> I would say, oh God, well, I, I was always doing, like I did, like probably most actors, I did a lot of like impersonations as a kid. The first one I did the most of was the Austin Powers was my favorite movie, so I did a lot of Austin Powers. Oh my god, I can totally imagine. It was like known on the street as like the kid who did Austin Powers, so people would like so stop what, can me. So you give me like a line no, from that? No, nope. no, <laughs> not, today. Nominee, not. not today. Not today, not um, today. Anyway, so, so there was always a perform. I had a, a desire to, to do some, some sort of live performance, but it wasn't until I did this theater program the summer of my junior year called Cherubs at mm-hmm. Northwestern oh. that it w- there was something about the life that came along with doing theater that there was a there was a wholeness to it that i experienced that i couldn't i don't know a connectedness and a community mm-hmm. that what of people who of really good people who mm-hmm. gathered to do this thing that i was like wow i like the way my life looks a lot more with this in my life and i want to mm-hmm. keep keep doing it so awesome that's yeah. great uh, Scott on Facebook asks, "What it's like? What is it like to work with actors with such stage credit in the Waverly Gallery?" Ah, uh, mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's not a legit uh, I it's, it's it honestly hit me last night that I was like, I've had people come see the show and who have been like, I feel like I got I got to be a part of something special just from watching Elaine. Hmm. And every once in a while, it hits me when I'm up there with her that I'm like, wow. I get to go to work on the same, like every day I get to show up in Elaine, I get to act with Elaine, who is truly a part of his, she's, she's, she, she represents something historically and, and what she's putting out there every single day to me is like, it, it's on par with what she represent. Like she, mm-hmm. it, it speaks to who she is mm-hmm. in history, and and I don't know it. it yeah, so so it means a lot. It just means a lot. That's mm-hmm. sort of my answer. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Um, LC on Instagram asks, "What do you do to prepare to go on stage for your oh. during Waverly? How do you prepare for your character?" Changes every night. Sometimes I just mess around. I like really mess around, and and one of the things I do a lot actually in my dressing room is is. Uh, uh, sing sing along to songs from Cats. <laughs> There's a um, lot of music. W- which like, I what's do like with a go-to David? Cats song? Rum Tum Tuggers really really gets Rum me Tum going. Um, yeah. So does us. Um, Gus the Theater Cat. Oh, I, think is a, I was is just talking about one. Gus the Theater Cat. But it's <laughs> nobody. The more people get to know me on this play, the more they're surprised that I lo- how much I love musical theater. So I love that you love Cats. Yeah, well, it, to me, it's just it it allows for an expressiveness that. I like because because I, I get so excited and hyper that if I get to just channel it all into something that's ex- really silly and and fun and so so that I do that but that's not my pro- I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm like banking on cats every night to <laughs> be able to do this show. Um, a lot of it's just breathing and meditating and um, I I like to listen to this song called Night Shift before I go on. 
Because it's it's surprising. The, the song, you know I'm the song thinking Commodores of? by the Commodores. On the night shift. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but the reason why it's special is because I don't know. It, it, there's an aspect of the song that it's about remembering. It's about mm. remembering people you love and mm. and about not being alone. And 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 I think it's a lot of the stories about I don't know going through a hard experience in isolation and mm -hmm. and. And I, it, it, it seems like a celebration of uh, and loving of those people we want to remember. So I'm going to listen to that song like yeah, the minute you leave it. here because yeah. I love that song. And I also want to let you know, you know, they are currently casting um, Oscar winners, Oscar nominees in a movie version of Cats. I know they are. I'm very excited. I, there's a lot it. of Cats roles. So I, know. I, I haven't heard anyone's playing I'm, Gus the well, Theater the, Cat. As far as I'm concerned, it's, it's uh, um, happening alongside of of this production of the Waverly Gallery. You can do it on Mondays. Yeah. Just fly exactly. over to London exactly. on Mondays. <laughs> um, but no, I'm very excited to go see it. I'm you very, will definitely I'm very, be, you're, think, you're in I line to see it. I actually heard that Jason Derulo is playing the Rum Tum yes. Tugger. How do you feel about that? I, I have no problems with okay. it, but I'm just excited. I, I really, and, and uh, I don't, I feel like it's somewhat controversial to, like I have a lot of friends who are musical theater like lovers uh -huh. and who like really, um, aren't aren't as big of a fan of cats. Mm -hmm. Like no. I I don't. No, the snobs, but I'm sort of coming. I'm coming like in cats. like for, I'm like a Midwesterner with respect mm -hmm. to musical theater. So I have I like, like no sense of like like this is high like quality musical theater. Right. Like I'm just like I I go for whatever makes me want to like dance. Well, that you know? makes it high quality musical yeah. theater. Yeah. Uh, I I fell in love with Broadway because of cats. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, great. and I'm very open about that with everyone. So <laughs> you want to come at me with cats? Go for it. Because I but think I'm, it's, I'm with him. It's, it's so I I really love the music so much. Yeah, um, it's fantastic. Yeah, and I want you to be in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> we have one last question. Yeah, let's do one more question. Question. So John on Twitter wants to know if you have any dream theater roles. Oh. Um. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, um. Well. You have a lot of time. Oh God, you know me. I like to really <laughs> take my time. No, I um, mean in your life. You have like, oh, okay. you have plenty. I mean, you can you can think of any age. I mean, it could be like death of a salesman. I'd say I'd probably say um, uh, Malvolio mm -hmm. in Twelfth Night would okay. be really cool. Some of them are Shakespearean. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah, I think there's something about like a really silly Shakespearean part would be cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, that's what first came to mind. When I was younger, I thought I wanted to play the gentleman caller, but I think that's like kind of cliche and not like I don't know. It's like nope, just he like, won't do that one. Cross yeah. that off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I keep hitting this. Um, right. <laughs> I don't. I think that's what I got right now. Okay, Malvolio. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's a classic. Yeah, that's a good one. Look, that, I'm sure that could happen. It's good. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. Good. Thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for a good answer. Uh, thank you for being here. Thanks I want. For I have me. one final question. You are about to um, celebrate your first birthday on Broadway. Yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Hmm. Um, Sing with Elaine May and. <laughs> yeah, I think they'll. Um, David had his birthday. They all got him a cake and sang him Happy Birthday. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully, I'll get that At treatment least. too, <laughs> and <laughs> and I'll enjoy that and. Yeah. I don't know. I, I find birthdays uh, recently have been days that I actually get really grumpy. I get really like frustrated that... Now that you're in your early 20s, yeah, it feels like the I end is like, coming. Yeah. Well, but I... I and I, I'm, I'm looking forward to having stuff to take my focus off of myself. You know, I don't have okay. to obsess over me. me. It's like... I, I always want my birthday to be more than what it ends up being. So now I... Now I just gotta. You can't I've yourself got stuff out. to do. So just like, just go and just hang out with the right exactly. people. Like exactly. Elaine May, you have a lot of people to hang out with every night. So yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, a lot of people. To hang so uh, out. let's see. I'm gonna get some dates out there. Boy Erased is in theaters right now. Yes, you all should see it. Ben is back. Comes out December seventh. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew that. That's next week. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. And the Waverly, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. the yeah, Waverly Gallery is through January twenty seventh. Woo! It's fantastic. I'm telling you. Go and my birthday is on December 12th. And his birthday <laughs> is on December 12th. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very so much. Nice to meet Thanks you. for Thanks having for me. I really in. appreciate it. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Take us out. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us in a podcast version by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Telly Leung about being a Disney prince in his new holiday single.